Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming and enjoy your lunch. Eight smaklik. I'm going to talk about self-learning game playing today. Um, basically, going to go over some what's machine learning and why it's important. Uh, game playing is important. A bit of the history of uh, machine learning and some of the games and machine learning that um, that are being have been uh, machine learning has been used. And also going to talk about AlphaGo because that's one of the most, more important things that's going on right now with. Uh, machine learning. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from San Diego originally. Um, I studied there. I did my uh, thesis back in the 90s, uh, and I studied backpropagation. Uh, I ran into this uh, professor at the university, and he gave a talk on machine learning. His name's Robert Heck Nielsen, and he started a company called HNC Software. And I ended up working there, and we created a product called Database Mining Marksman. Uh, it was uh, written in C, C++, and it had a board in it and basically we sold it for $50,000. So it gave you the power of a Cray uh, in, a, in a computer at that time, which is 386 or 46. Uh, they, the SNAP processor won the Gordon Bell Award because it, because it performed so well in, in that configuration. Um, I live in the Netherlands. I'm a C++ Java guy, um, more Java, and also Angular, I'm doing stuff with Polymer. So I'm not a data scientist, more of a computer scientist. I like this stuff. Uh, married with five kids and four cats. One just unfortunately passed away. And they also play a bit of music. So um, before we start, uh, let's talk about what's machine learning and what it means to you. you. You hear these days, like the last talk about driving a car, use machine learning. Uh, you can use it for playing games like AlphaGo. Some of the people who are critics of machine learning and AI say, well, OK, make a machine learning algorithm that can tell a joke or tell a story. So there's people that think machine learning is really far along, and some people think that it really hasn't gone anywhere at all. I tend to think about machine learning as making a prediction. Um, and I got into uh, game playing because in the 90s, I finished my thesis, and I had back propagation, and I bought a laptop, and then I didn't have any data. I had this small laptop, 10 gigabytes, so I, I started playing around with um, games, and I could generate uh, like for tic-tac-toe and let it play for three or four days and to see what I could come up with for the results. Um, if you are into machine learning, the thing you'll learn right away, and you can see if you've gone to other um, presentations, is machine learning loves lots of data, and the more the better. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I want to go back and talk a little bit about the history of machine learning because I think that's important. Um, to look where we're going and, and what the developments are. So back in the 50s, um, one of the first peop people who did something with machine learning and game playing was uh, Samuels, and he invented alpha beta pruning. So he basically made a tree, and he figured out, I can prune off some parts of the tree and make the algorithm faster. And another guy was Rosenblatt, and he invented a perceptron. And that started getting funding for neural networks, but this clever guy, Marvin Minsky at MIT, wrote a book and said, well, your perceptron uh, may uh, take over the world, but it can't solve a simple, simple problem. So at that point, um, the, the uh, funding for AI kind of dried up, and it went more for expert systems. Uh, and then in the 80s, um, at UCSD, I don't, no one's probably ever seen this book. Has anybody had the Parallel Distributed Processing book? No one's ever seen this. This was the book that in it had the algorithm back propagation. And that led to a rebirth of uh, machine learning. And you also have uh, Watkins developing uh, Q-learning. And then there was a book, uh, the first version of reinforcement learning. So you had the basis now for what's modern machine learning, these two algorithms, back propagation, which is used a lot like in uh, TensorFlow. And then you also have um, the reinforcement learning, which is used in AlphaGo. Um, I, like I said, I played around for about three years. You can see there's disks there. I still have them from when I was playing. One of those is from one of my colleagues. He did his PhD thesis on temporal difference learning in Go. Um, I never did anything with that disk, but it's, I still have it. And, um, and you had Tesaro. Tesaro was an important name, which people don't associate with AlphaGo. He basically um, used uh, a neural net to learn to play backgammon, and he got OK results. And then he tried uh, self-learning game playing with backgammon. In the end, he got it to play at a good level. 
And then IBM, um, they attacked the problem of chess, but they used brute force search. So they just threw a lot of hardware at the problem and they ended up using alpha, beta, minimax, which is an older algorithm. So you can really get good results if you have a lot of hardware with just um, yeah, brute force. Um, oops. Oh, shoot. My Microsoft just crashed. I'm going to... Sorry. Um, <clears throat> when I moved to the Netherlands, I, I liked this algorithm that Tassaro had done, and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm interested, and I, I wanted to play around with it. So I, uh, I got Q Learning and, and some papers on it, and I wrote a version of Q Learning and did it for a while. I had, a, again, a small laptop and just ran, uh, ran it uh, and was able to duplicate the results. So without having any data, um, it just self-learns and self-plays. But I had a girlfriend that, at the time, and she uh, didn't like that I was doing this in the evening, so I kind of cut it off. But I did try to publish the results, but no one, <laughs> no one really um, knew what the power of this algorithm was. It, I was told I have a solution with uh, looking for a problem. Um, anyway, so you have these other uh, different types of things, like uh, deep face and eventually AlphaGo. Um, I'm, I have nine minutes left, so I'm going to go pretty quick. The, this is um, the basis of machine learning. You have a um, neural network, feed forward. You have one, or multi one layer or multiple layers. You feed it uh, patterns, and then you just train it. So you loop through the patterns, and it learns those patterns. And if you're lucky, it generalizes. So you go through and just, yeah, the more patterns that you have, the better, because it doesn't learn anything outside of those patterns you teach it. So, for instance, the famous XOR problem, you have uh, one or other, not the both, and with a backpropagation, you can learn that, but you can also learn more, more complicated problems. Um, Robert Heck Nielsen, I remember him talking a lot about this. So, if you have any set of inputs and outputs, you should be able to map the two between them. So, there exists for any two sets of inputs and outputs a mapping between the two. So, that means you can solve a lot of problems. Um, again, um, Tassaro used this approach. He first taught uh, TD Gammon with, um, with the neural network, and then later on he went and used reinforcement learning. Um, you can, I, didn't, I emailed with him at, at this time when, um, when I was doing mine because I had some problems, but I, I didn't um, notice until I went back and read it now that he did a two-ply search. So he did a two uh, look ahead, and, and then he said, if I had three, I could have done even better. So I think he had some hardware limitations at the time. And reinforcement learning is a little bit of a different algorithm. It learns on itself. Um, I'm going to give a demo really quick. Um, and, and for tic-tac-toe, you basically, with Q learning, you go through and you loop, but instead of using patterns, you play itself. So you, um, you make a move, you adjust the, the states, you make a move, you adjust the states, you can go back and forth. But it, does, it learns outside of the normal patterns because you use randomness. You don't always pick your move, you, do, you pick a random move. Um, i keep going. Um, again, for, for tic-tac-toe, there's 20,000 states. For backgammon, there was quite a lot more. And I'm gonna quickly do a demo. Hopefully you can see this. Oh. Yeah, okay. Do you see this? Okay, don't, I don't. Ah, here we go, sorry. Okay, so. For training a neural network, you can uh, basically um, say JPRAC prop, and you give it a pattern, XOR.train, and yeah, this, this was a network, and, it, and it's learned to, to play. And then um, I did that approach for a while. You can see 
that the patterns I generated back then were like this. It's a set of inputs and then it had a measurement for how good the move was gonna be. So I generated a lot of different, um, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. I have it set up correctly. All right, let's maximize this. So yeah, that's the inputs and the outputs. So you can do that to, to play a game. You can generate lots of patterns. And then, uh, Okay, and I'm gonna go to the demo. So I, I have a, um, J. So I have Q Learning here. This is, um, and I trained it here. There's a Q Go SH, and basically it loops through and it goes, uh, does a lot of tries and it ends up, and I figure out what the best is. And you can see here. Um, in the end, you have nine, it went, it's winning 99% of the time. When it goes first, it wins 25% of the time. So I wanted it to be 100%. So I was emailing Tassaro and I said, what do I do? And uh, he's, I figured out you have to do a look ahead. So, and then I'll give you a quick demo of this. So again, it only, uh, I'm gonna have it so first, it, it goes first, and I play, so do a new game, so. So I won, but if I make it do a look ahead, and I used a Minimax in a way, then it, it does pretty well. So in the end, um, even though it only, well, it does 99% of the time, it ends up playing a game that's perfect. Um, okay. So AlphaGo is a lot more complex. I think it's a pretty simple algorithm, but um, uh, yeah, you can, um, Self-learning is a pretty simple algorithm. I won't have time to show you the algorithm, but I wanted to go over this. Monte, uh, AlphaGo basically uses Monte Carlo's tree search, a neural network, and reinforcement learning. So they have one network which they ask, what's the next move to make? And it gives an answer. And they have another um, network which predicts the winner of a game. And they train it for the policy network by um, using it 30 million moves. And then eventually they use reinforcement learning. And reinforcement learning um, is good because it will sometimes make random moves. And they use the policy network to, to train the value network. And I'm sorry, one thing I want to point out is the policy network uh, ends up being so good that they can use it without using look ahead and it beats other algorithms. And um, again, the I'm gonna go fast, so the Monte Carlo tree search, they're able to make this big tree and they combine these two networks. They basically ask what move to make and how good can it win and they're able to go through and come up with a good answer which in the end, yeah, lets them play it at a really good level. Um, yeah, for the, oops, I skipped one slide. The, um, yeah, normally they use a lot of hardware and so forth, a lot of CPUs and for the game uh, against Fan Yu, they used really a lot of um, yeah, a lot of hardware. And then the AlphaGo, the thing is, it made a big leap forward when they basically don't use neural networks at all. They only use reinforcement learning. So they didn't use any training data. They basically, it plays against itself. And I wish I had time, I could show you the algorithm, but I don't. Um, but yeah, it just, they, they started playing and it does self-learning um, by playing against itself a lot of times. So this is a big thing. We can use this algorithm in a lot of other uh, applications where you can, it can learn by self-learning. Um, that's it. And there's also a lot of stuff out there you guys can check out. You got uh, deep learning for J and so forth. I play with this a little bit, but I tend to prefer to write my own um, software for playing with this. I got 30 seconds. Any questions from anyone? 
No questions? Okay. Thank you very much.